Right. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Irwin, and I'm part of the developer relations team at Docker, and we are super excited to welcome you to the next uh, webinar in our series uh, supporting the, the AI machine learning hackathon. Uh, for those that are, are new to, uh, to this series, um, if you're interested in joining our hackathon, uh, we'll put the link in chat in, in just a moment, but uh, DevPost, we've partnered with DevPost, and they're helping sponsor and helping us run the event. Um, uh, links to all, lots of additional resources, including the, the previous webinars, are also available there, as well as on our YouTube channel. I'm excited today to welcome uh, Akalesh, or as we often just call him, AK, um, here for uh, the, the webinar today. And with that, I will pass the baton off to him, let him introduce himself a little bit, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, but before I do that, uh, just a reminder, if anybody wants to add any questions or, or things along the way, feel free to drop them in chat, and uh, we'll respond to them as we go throughout. Um, and then we'll also have some time uh, towards the end as well. So, AK, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks for the intro, Michael. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, I am AK. I am a backend engineer at uh, Docker. So I work on the hub side, mainly on the enterprise features kind of space. But um, one thing I wanted to like show people for the hackathon was how Docker Hub worked, because I know there's a lot of new users, especially to, you know, these hackathons, and, you know, they might not know the difference between, you know, what is Docker, what is Docker Hub, what are all these different things, right? Uh, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to kind of showcase that kind of thing and, you know, provide a forum to ask questions um, and just get this information out there. So without further ado, let me share my screen. Oh, whoops. Let me... I have to give permission to my screen recording. One moment. And so while he's doing that, I'll, I'll just jump in real quick. And uh, for those that haven't jumped in uh, with with the hackathon yet, we've had quite a few uh, webinars uh, from the, our, our partners uh, that have been helping us out with the hackathon. We've had uh, Neo4j and Datastax. Um, we will have OctoML uh, in just a, another day or two as well, too. So um, again, stay tuned uh, for, for more info here soon. And oh, we got AK back. I am and, back. Uh, we'll get a screen share up. go clear that out real quick and then, uh, yeah so to start you know docker hub so uh, here we are uh, as you know docker has been around for almost you know i think over 10 years now uh, we basically revolutionized how applications are built and deployed um, all over the world uh, basically bringing in microservices and it's completely redefining how we package our applications. Um, so as part of that, uh, we built something that we call Docker Hub. So this is one of the earlier things that we did. Um, so uh, this is a SaaS uh, platform basically that we offer. Um, uh, and as you can see, you know, what, what is Docker Hub, right? It's, it's many things, but I would say primarily it is a repository for, um, for images. Um, so you you would call this a um, basically what's it called? Um, oh, I'm, I'm already, uh, uh, it's a registry uh, essentially of images uh, that are available for the entire world to use. So a lot of your favorite um, applications that you might be using in your own Docker composers, for instance, these are actually hosted on Docker Hub. Uh, so it's just a it's a store for any application or image that you might be building. Um, and allow um, you to basically show that to the world, uh, allow people to access them. Uh, so we have we support um, personal hosting. So if you have your own images, you can set up your own organization, um, make everything private for your own company. You know, don't have to expose anything. Uh, you can set this up as an individual developer. You know, host your own images on here uh, for yourself, and then when you're ready, you can you know, expose them uh, to the world. Uh, which is, of course, very relevant in the in the context of a hackathon because, you know, you want to show off the great hacks that you're working on, right? And you want to uh, like allow others to build upon what you're you're building. Um, so, uh, having a place like Docker Hub where you can kind of um, publish to is a, is a very important. Uh, it's actually a backbone of a lot of the software that is currently running in the world right now because, as I mentioned, uh, whenever you do a Docker pull. Uh, for instance, like Nginx or like Postgres, um, a lot of times these are actually hosted on Docker Hub. 
Um, so this is kind of driving all of that. Uh, so Hub provides a convenient one-stop place to, you know, kind of go through, look at the catalog of, you know, what have people published. Uh, it also offers a trusted place for this. Uh, there are other, you know, registries out there, um, uh, very good ones as well. Um, but, you know, if it's, you know, a Docker official image or a verified publisher, you know it's going to be quality, um, quality work. Uh, and you can trust that, you know, many people have used it. Um, as you can see, you know, we you can see how many people have pulled this um, overall in the last week. It's over 10 million, right? Um, so there's a there's a certain level of trust there, um, and you can see like you know who's actually like liking this stuff, um, and it's available for you know many different architectures, um, uh, whatnot, uh, all in one place. So yeah, so I mentioned earlier, Hub is a container registry. So what does that actually mean? Um, so typically, when you build an application, you know you've you've written your code, you have you set up your database, whatever, uh, you have all of that in a code repo, right? Uh, how do you actually get that into the world? Well, you create, first instance, you create a Docker file, uh, you build your image out of that. So um, that's great, you now have a Docker image, but how do you you know, send that to other people to use? Well, it's, it's basically just a binary, right? So if they have the, the Docker image and they have the Docker um, tool, they can run that run that image on their computer. Well, great, uh, how are you gonna send that? Are you gonna send it through email? No, are you gonna, you know, what's a convenient way of doing this? Well, that's why container registries were kind of invented. Um, it's kind of a thing where it's a it's a it's another repository not for your code but for your images where you essentially push to them and then you have a centralized location that uh, people that are authorized can pull from uh, so docker hub is an example of that there are other um, you know registries that you may be aware of ecr github uh, whatnot um, and it's just a central place with some authorization access and some other helpful features on top where uh, you can kind of you know get access to this. So when you build an image, it creates like a, a immutable set of layers. So when you actually look at an image, it's not just like a single thing, right? You actually have, when you create a Docker file, you actually have these instructions. You see progress going through layer by layer. And that's because you're not downloading this entire thing at once. You're downloading these layers, which means these layers can be shared. Um, so the entire you know how docker files work you might see for here from golang alpine right so this is actually building on top of another docker file um, so you can kind of nest these things together and then you might have on this golang uh, image and then uh, but you only have to download that once right so this, this layer concept is a uh, is very nice and this also means that whenever you're pushing images to docker hub uh, you can, you're basically just pushing these layers plus some additional metadata, um, like manifests, for instance, or like if you have multi-arc um, images, like, you know, that will also be, you know, kind of list, be listed in there. Um, and uh, these are all pushed up uh, to, to Docker Hub or any other registry you like. By default, it's Docker Hub when you use Docker. Uh, and once that's there, um, the application um, stack, you can actually use that right there. Like, for instance, here in my DB, I'm specifying this images. Uh, if you pull repository and you can just download it right there. It's very convenient. Um, so yeah, you, there's a distinction there between like, you know, what exactly is, you know, you have the Docker images and then you have the, the registry on top. Um, which is kind of like a separate place in the cloud um, that you push pull from. Makes sense. Um, so let me get started. I can show, you know, when we actually go to Docker Hub, what does it look like? Um, what are some of the features that we offer? Um, and actually, it's Uh, this also adds like other features like you know scout which i'll be kind of touching upon later on um that you will be treated to uh, i actually showed the explorer before so uh yeah you have access to all of hub right here and as in the screenshot before you can see all of these images that are available um you can filter these down so you can filter by, you know, images, um, 
say you're looking for like a specific one that you want, you can actually search uh, Docker Hub. Right. You can also see different tags that you want. Um, you have all these places, um, these different tags, and a lot of times the documentation here too. So you can use that to you know get started. Um, it's very common in our uh, most uh, popular images. Uh, but you also have access to set up your own repositories. So let me. So you, if you go to the repository section, I can create my own repository now. Um, I call this uh, demo repo. And uh, I can choose whether or not it's public or private. Um, so this depends on what plan you have. By default, I can just create one private repo. Um, so the use of this is, you know, if I'm in the middle of working on something, I don't want you know expose this to the world. Or use that. Use a private repo for that, and you can. But if you want something, you know, you want other people to build on top of, you can just make it public. Uh, very simple, and you can always switch between. So, um, you know, up to you. You can always I got, let me create a private one first, and then you can just make it public if I wanted to later. Um, yeah. So once I create a repo, you can see I have uh, just an empty uh, place to push my images to. Um, so, uh, say for instance, and let me make sure my screen sharing works properly here. Screen. Yeah. So I can build a, a demo application here. So I got found this. Um, it seemed like a nice one for, uh, for apropos. It's a, it's a machine learning one, you know, some scikit learn stuff uh, to build uh, uh, application. And you can see it's just a standard, you know, Python application. Uh, if you go to a model, you can see I have binary data that I'm reading from and doing some inferences on. Um, so, uh, and I have a Docker file. And it's fairly simple. You just have a base Python image, um, just copying over my dependencies, installing it, and then I'm running it. So I can just do a quick um, Docker build of this. built that and then uh, as you can see here I can push this to my namespace and image um, so right now you can see here that my namespace is just my username um, this means the repository is personally under my account and I can show how if you're working with a team uh, which you might be doing for a hackathon for instance uh, you might not want that to be the case so I can show you how you manage that um, so this repo I have this so I'll have to tag it for my uh, I think that should be yeah, its latest. So I can tag it. So this is my remote repo. So you can see it's uh, my namespace and my demo repo here, and then just whatever tag name I want. Um, so I can leave that blank if I want to store. I can say you know, awesome version, and then. Let me zoom in actually. I know this can be kind of annoying on the screen share sometimes. Um, so I can do a quick Docker push. Uh, actually, before I do that, I did this beforehand um, while I was logging in. Uh, so to authenticate to, to Docker Hub and be able to push this, I actually need to log in first. Um, so this will succeed right now because I'm authenticated, but you know. Um, for people that are not, so typically you can just do Docker login dash u and then your username. So token. So this is you can kind of treat it as like a password. Um, let me show that. This is the recommended way of doing things. Um, I would uh, I would say don't use a don't use a password. Um, I would use a personal access token. And the reason for that is when you have a pat, you can set scopes on there. Um, and so you can limit the access that you have with those credentials. Uh, so even if the, you know your pat gets leaked, um, 
they only have certain access to it. And it means that you can revoke, revoke access to the PAT. So you can just much um no, let's see so you can just generate however much how many you want so yeah if you go to your user profile settings and then go to security you can generate a new access just call it whatever you want and you can see here you have the different uh permissions there so it goes from least to greatest level of permissions um let's see and i'm going to delete this because i don't want to give anyone to have access actually let's make this safe um, and you can see here, it generates a pat. Um, and then you can only see it once, and then you can use this uh, to log in. So what I did was I just created a, in my profile, um, I set up this password, uh, or this pat, and then I piped that into Docker login to be secure. And then let me actually just delete that one real quick. Da, da, da. So you can see, I can... Uh, just delete my access token, and there we go. No worries about access anymore. So that's a convenient thing. But I already set it up. So um, what I will do is just uh, echo this. To that. And then So it's logged in. Great. So now I'm authenticated. Uh, now I can uh, do a push of my and let me just copy paste this. So I can now push my image. And as you can see here, I have I'm pushing all of these in succession. Uh, these are actually the layers that I'm I'm pushing up. Um, That's 500 megabytes. Let me actually let me show with a smaller image. Um, let's see, I'm gonna tag this some random image because that's the fastest engine next pretty quick. Um, I can tag this with. Uh, da, da, da. So as you can see here, um, the actual content of the repository, we don't really care about. You can put whatever image you want, and the tag is just gonna point to that, you know, new set of layers, you know, in the the new image. Um, so I can just say uh, it's a small. Uh, and then I'm gonna push that. This should be much faster. Okay, and then now refreshing. As you can see here, I now have my new tag. Um, so it's a Linux image, uh, AMD 4, 64. Um, but yeah, I have access to this now. And then this is a private repo, so you know the world can't you know pull it. But if I made it public, anyone else could pull this image right now, um, and it's as simple as that. And you can have as in, you know numerous tags because tags are just pointers, right? So the actual thing that if you want to pin to a specific version, you want to use the digest, which is kind of like a hash of um, like a given image uh, at a certain period of time. Uh, and the thing with tags is tags can actually change what they point to. So this tag to small can actually change to a different version in the future if I were to push to that. So if you're, you know, if you're depending on this for your CIC. Um, you can actually push using the, the, the man, um, uh, using that digest uh, instead. Uh, and that'll give you a guarantee. You can pin to that version. Cool use case, you will be using tags. Uh, and this is a common usage of, you know, Docker Hub um, and just registries in general. Like why, uh, up, aside from collaboration, why would you use it? Uh, another reason is for things like CI CD. So if you're deploying your application um, in like a, some cloud environment, uh, you don't want to have to 
you know, pull in your code, build from that, and then, you know, deploy each time, right? So what a typical uh, process could look like and is kind of like what Docker itself uses actually is whenever you check in a code, uh, check in some code, um, you have some process, some action that builds that uh, image and then it pushes with a certain tag. Um, and then you'll see like a list of tags here and actually one of these might actually have, this one's not very good. Um, uh, I don't see anything, is there anything public? if I have any on here. Um, and your uh, cloud build environment will basically build up. Um, uh, you can see a lot of providers have their own implementation, GitHub is actions, you know, whatever. But we also provide that functionality in Hub uh, itself. Um, so we can do a setup of build um, based off of a, a code repo. Um, so I actually don't have the plan on here, but um, I can show what it looks like for, let's see, is this a business org? Um, I can use the test organization here. I think that should be a business org. Um, okay, yeah, you can see like versions of tags here, but I can set up a build here um, and I can link it. You can connect this to a specific repo and then set up some rules about, um, you know, create a build based off of main whenever any changes are pushed to there. And that will, in our cloud, uh, you know, create a build of that Docker image and then host that. Um, and then it will push those tags and then you'll have it available to deploy um, in your CD environment. You know, you'll be able to pick up that image and automatically, uh, you know, provision that um, and then your application will be deployed. Uh, and that's a very common pattern that we see. Um, and you can see here, this one actually has some builds set up. So you have, um, you know, these builds based off a of master um, that were created. Uh, I don't actually. Um, let's see, I don't think I have any builds set up on my personal account, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I'll just show you some build settings. Um, settings management. So one benefit of pushing images to Docker Hub, uh, this is actually a product that we recently released called Docker Scout. I won't get too much into this. Um, you know, you can visit our website, but I can show you um, just like quickly what this will and then let's see stories you can see I have my repo here and this will do some Im image analysis. Um, so this is very neat, you know, especially in this world where security is becoming much more important. Uh, we now offer products, you know, help you identify vulnerabilities. And uh, we also offer you insights on how to fix them, which is um, something that's very important. You know, it's, it's no use knowing that your, you know, image is insecure if you don't know. And so, you know, for a hackathon context, you know, pulled down the code and build it themselves, but you know, there's always differences in your local environment. You know, you know Docker helps in that, um, but it's nice, you know, if you already have the image built, you know, why not just pull it down, run it immediately, right? So you can set up your own push that uh, image to, to Hub and pull it down as a, as a collaborator, uh, and that's great. 
Um, if you have more people, you know, it might be useful to even just create an organization because that's, you know, you have access control there. Um, so this kind of builds off, you're building like a full fledged product that you want to, you know, kind of host. Um, it's very useful for that. And I can show you somewhat uh, what like an organization means. So like the repository I just showed you, I mentioned earlier, it was created on my personal namespace. Um, but, you know, if you're building like a professional product out of this, you know, you want something that's, um, you know, kind of, you have something for your specific business um, entity, right? So you can create an organization for it. Um, and you have additional management features based off of that. So, uh, so this is actually on a free tier, but that's fine. I can show you some of the uh, features on there. So you can set up teams actually um, when you have an organization. So I can create my team, um, set up, you know, whatever description. Uh, I don't have that on my plan, but um, once I create a team, I can actually add members to it. Um, and then the most importantly, what I can do here is set up permissions based off of the team. So access control is very important. You don't, you know, it's getting kind of annoying. Let me just use a business word. Uh, Yeah. Uh, so for this repo, test repo, I want to give anyone who's in this team admin access. Give everyone the reading to the code, you can give that. Um, and they'll be able to push it from their computer just like that, um, very simply. Um, no, actually, this is actually finished pushing. So I can go back here and then show the different uh, tags. You can see here my awesome tag was just pushed. Um, so once you set up these permissions, yeah, you can set up your teams. Uh, you're you know all set to go. Um, you can set up you know see activity based off of that. Um, there's some additional settings like, um, you know, if you worry about um, provisioning all sorts of that, we have automation uh, for that. Um, yeah, a lot of very useful features there. Um, and once you actually have the, you know, this image pushed um, to here, let me actually delete that from my local um, computer. Where did that tag it as? This came in. Okay, yeah, I was able to delete it using that um, instead. But cool, so now I can, unless I don't have that. So now, you know, different computer, um, a different user, I can now actually just, you know, pull this down again um, because I'm authenticated and it's pushed, it's in hub and I don't have to specify any registry or anything. Um, so manifest. Um, It, as you can see, I already have the layers, but uh, it goes to the remote registry and tries to pull that down. Um, and then it says, you know, download the latest. And this is the digest I was talking about before. So you can actually pin and, um, you know, pull using that specific version. 
Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of. So, uh, I think it's been a year now, but we've uh, added support for uh, OCI artifacts. So, images is you know Docker doesn't exactly care about what is going on inside the image. So you can actually stuff whatever you want in there. Uh, so this is something I was recognized um, before. Um, so a specification was actually created to make a, something generic effect where people can uh, push whatever kind of uh, thing that they want. Uh, and using the same you know, common set of APIs, um, the idea was that registry should be able to handle this. Um, so with artifact support, this means that uh, you can push things like you know, your training data, you know, your actual built model. Um, you can actually create an artifact out of those and push that, and Docker Hub supports that. Um, create an artifact, you know, arbitra arbitrary text, um, and then using that, um, there's a tool that you can use called o ORAS. Um, so yeah, you can just do. Um, you can just log in to your registry with that. Need to no. Log in is it dash um, Oh, actually, I have SSO enabled on this account. Um, I actually have a demo account I can use. To that. Yeah, I logged in, and then is now I can push this so I can create a repo. You can set up descriptions and whatever, you know, for your, for other people so you know what you're doing. Um, but now you can do ORAS push. Um, Do I have the config face on? Um, I'll have to see uh, here. But you know, uh, if you have this set up properly, you will be able to just do like a Docker push. You can do ORAS push to push um, your artifact. But yeah, um, so that means you can upload whatever you want in there, your training data, um, and you can collaborate based off of that because we have these collaborators. So you can add push pull access and they will, they'll be able to pull down your data. And as long as you have their Docker account, um, you can add them and then add the collaborator and then it will give them access as well. Um, there's other features but I don't think they'll be very useful in a hackathon context, so I'll uh, kind of skip over them. But yeah, it's kind of like an overview of you know what Docker provides and why it could be useful for you as a developer or as an organization. Um, 
Uh, so I guess I'll be uh, open for questions now. Um, I'm not sure if we have any in there. Yeah. Hey, I'll, uh, first off, great job. And uh, I'll, there's uh, been one or two kind of read between lines of them. Uh, I've got a couple others that I've, I've heard commonly from the, the community that maybe I'll throw out as well too. Um, so one, uh, Gabrielle asked, and, and you touched on this a little bit as you were talking about tagging and, and that kind of stuff too, but feel free to, to maybe dive into other ways you've seen people uh, do things or whatnot. Um, but but Gabrielle asked, um, I'm curious how version control of Docker images work with Hub. Um, and, and so you're talking about a little bit of that with tagging or whatnot, but if there are any maybe specifics or any other things that you might want to dive into. So if I've got version one of my app, version two of my app, or what sort of tagging strategies you've seen people use and i know that can vary quite a bit too but oh, yeah, um, of course <laughs> yeah so yeah. let you go I mean, for tags it. Yeah, they're they're they can be whatever you want to make out of them right it's just it's just text um but i think the most common scheme that i've seen is sember so you have major minor patch um and that's very useful because you know what kind of impact it will have on your application for instance if it's a major change which means yeah, version 1.0.0. If that one bumps up to a two, you know, it's a breaking change. That's a big change. Um, so you'll want to be very careful about pulling down that new version. Uh, but if it's a patch change, so if it's the very last number, so from 1.0.0 to 1.0.1, um, then you can be kind of, you know, you, I can just pull down the latest one and I'll be, you know, the changes are. Um, and that's kind of common across, you know, not just for, for Docker images, but um, any sort of uh, software, you know, versioning. Um, it's just a very useful way of communicating intent. Um, so I would say that's the, the most common and recommended way. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I see that quite a bit as well, too. Um, I also say, too, uh, I guess it largely also depends on what's building your images. Um, I've seen a lot of yes. uh, automated CI CD pipelines that we'll use um, as part of the, that tag schema. Maybe it's a, a pipeline identifier dash short commit hash or um, you know, a timestamp or something like that. So there's really, there's, there's, yeah, as, as you just said, it's, it's an arbitrary string. So feel free to pick whatever makes the most sense for your, for your organization, for your needs, et cetera. And, and so, yeah, Simver is definitely one of those more, most popular ones. Um, but again, you, you pick what works for you. So exactly. Um, I'll just say the most important thing is making sure, you know, the the format that you use is communicated out because that's the most important thing in development right getting everyone on the same page so you know you can make arbitrary things for yourself but if people don't understand what you mean by them it's not gonna be very useful for them so yep absolutely all right so another question for you um i've got a github repo um, and maybe I, i'm not using automated builds i'm gonna use github actions because i'm going to be doing other things what what sorts of things um, exist there to help push my images from my github action into, into hub yeah, so you'll want to set up a service account. So that's basically just going to be, you know, like a like a Docker account. Um, but where what's really important there is the um, the paths I was talking about earlier. Um, so especially when you're using machines, you know, you don't want to give them, you know, their own passwords. You want to give them a scoped access uh, token, and you can set that up as I know for GitHub you can. Docker Hub secret for your path. Um, that you created and you can use those credentials into Docker login essentially on your um, action script. Um, and then it'll have action uh, access to your um, to your namespace and be able to push images forward. Yep, awesome. Um, we're getting a couple of shout outs as well for the the presentation already. Um, I think that so Gabrielle, who asked the the, sure. the question earlier, said uh, not a question, but this was great. Uh, Agalesh, thanks for the walkthrough behind the scenes uh, look at Docker Hub. So getting some uh, accolades from the the crowd already too. So. Um, and a couple other thank yous as well too. Um, again, if anybody's watching and they've got additional questions, feel free to uh, drop them in chat. We see some folks joining from Egypt and even from uh, Tokyo, which is quite an early morning for for you over in Tokyo uh, to be joining us. So again, glad to have you here with us today. Um, let's see, scanning through if there's any other questions here. Um, Not seeing much else, but um, any final words of wisdom that you might want to uh, impart for folks uh, that are uh, getting started with the, the hackathon here? All good. All right. Well, 
Yep, it looked looked like uh, AK was getting a little bit of a interesting video action going on there too. So, um, pardon the the, the stream snafus a little bit. You know, we're we're still getting used to to running these live streams as well too, and uh, we'll we'll figure it as as we uh, do more of them. You know, sometimes you just gotta learn as you do, and uh, that's that's the, the the joy of it all here too. So, um, up. Oh. There he yep. is, back in I, here now. I, so yes, I think uh, I cut out there. <laughs> all good, all good. You know, things happen. This is, this is just proving to everybody that we're live here. So, yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I'm see. not sure if you got the end of my answer there, but um, I'm happy to repeat if like. I'll go go, go for it. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just saying. Yeah, once you you've set up a, a pat inside mm -hmm. Docker Hub, you can create a secret in GitHub. In my back oh my god <laughs> i know we're just having some fun streaming but all good all good okay. um, i might just turn off my camera actually just for the for the upload all good all good yeah. um and, and i can repeat a little bit because I, I caught a little bit of that as well too but so yeah so if anybody's wanting to to connect their ci pipelines and and this will work whether it's github um or gitlab ci or you're using jenkins or whatever by creating one of those personal access tokens, and we often abbreviate it as PAT. So if you keep hearing in the same PAT, that's that's what he's talking about there. Uh, those personal access tokens can be plugged into your your CI pipelines, and then uh, that's how you authenticate with Hub, and uh, you can push images and, and pull images and, and everything uh, from there as well too. So um, that, that's kind of the mechanism. It, it works very much the same way as if you're locally you know, do it local on your local machine using your CLI and everything. Just it's automated in your browser. Or in your browser, in your uh, in your pipeline there as well too. So, um, let's see. We've got another question here. Um, any recommended API fundam fundamental books or content you can share? Got you got any favorite um, API materials? Um, okay. Favorite API materials. Um, I would say that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Um, I can share the uh, the Docker Hub. Um, API that I've mentioned before. So right now it's kind of a little bit sparse. Um, we're still populating it with sure. you know some of our publicly exposed endpoints. Um, but for now, you can actually see. Um, if I post in the chat, can they see it? Or... Um, let's see. Message this. Um, so you can actually see you know what what APIs you know Docker Hub exposes. Right now it's mainly just things related to. Uh, authentication, and then um, some things that are mostly useful if you're working with organizations, things like querying for logs or settings. Um, if you want to interact with the repos, there's actually an open specification for it, the registry v2. Let me grab a link for that real quick. Um, uh, you can actually see, I like this one because you can actually see, you know, it's an open specification and you, you know, it's a, it's very interesting to see uh, how people collaborate on these kind of things. but. Um, it'll show you how you know registry APIs work in general, but um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Let me oh my screen yeah. is freezing. And and I'll probably add there too. So so yeah, those are APIs that Docker Hub exposes um, and that provide various um, opportunities to query and, and and work with Hub and and various data there. Um, we don't have like not everything is accessible through the 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 public APIs and we don't have a lot of good versioning systems in place yet for all those different things. But if there's certain things that you're wanting to integrate or you're wanting to do, um, you know, we've got a public roadmap and uh, there's been quite a few conversations in the past of, hey, I want to be able to manage users, for example, using a hub API and whatnot. Um, and that that's exactly the place to have those types of conversation as well. So if you've got needs there that aren't covered by the API, feel free to go there. Um, and so kind of going back to your 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 question, you know, API fundamentals or books, honestly, just probably just spending time reading about REST APIs um, and what's the difference between a get and a post and a put and a delete, what, what are those different verbs? What even are HTTP verbs if you need to answer those kind of questions? Um, and then once you've got that, that fundamental understanding, at the end of the day, it really comes down to resources, at least with REST APIs and, and having resource-based endpoints and then how do you query them how do you um, modify them create them delete them etc um, and there's there's a lot of uh, content in this space as well too there's a lot of opinions in this space as well too um, but yeah 
feel free to, to check it out. And if you've got more questions, we, we dropped the link earlier for the, the Docker community Slack. Feel free to drop in and uh, ask more questions there and we'll be happy to, to help out wherever we can. Yeah, and just to add real quick, I actually just dropped a link to some, uh, it's like a massive repository of, you know, different oh. kinds of APIs that are exposed. So, you know, one thing I found very useful when I was starting out development, understanding these things is learning by doing um, and also learning by example. So. I would say download a tool like Postman, you know, construct some APIs, um, some some queries and find a public API. Um, I just linked one some right here. You know, for your favorite things, you know, if you're interested in anime, there's anime, uh, public anime APIs you can experiment with if you're in TV shows. You know, there's all these publicly available things and you can kind of get an idea for how these work just by, you know, querying them. And then there's also like, the wonders of open source, right? You can actually see how other people are implementing the, these things themselves. So you can, you know, how are the people actually implementing APIs? How are they calling them? You know, it's all on GitHub. Um, you can search for it and it's, it's very useful. It's out there for free. Yeah, fantastic. That, that, that's a great list. Uh, in fact, just the other day I was doing a, uh, a demo internally and I was just like, I need a public API. And I came across that same list and mm -hmm. uh, used it on the APIs. And then later I'm like, wait, how are the, how's this working? And just, yeah, dove right into the, the GitHub repo that was supporting that API and, uh, you know, learn a thing or two and whatnot too. So I'll echo exactly what you just said there. Um, don't be afraid to just jump in and kind of look at things, you know, in, in many ways we're all learning from each other as, as we go along. And so uh, don't be afraid to, to do that yourself too. Um, all right, and with that, I'm scanning through the rest of, uh, you're getting some love from uh, folks saying, you know, just streaming hiccups add a sense of danger and mystery um, and that it's uh, just makes it more, uh, more lifelike and, and whatnot to you. So uh, no worries about it. <laughs> I um, appreciate that. I yep, appreciate that. all good. Um, well, and I guess with that, uh, we're, we're getting close to time. I don't see uh, many more questions coming. Any final words of advice that you'd give to our, our hackathon participants here? I would say, you know, just be, go crazy, be creative. Um, the whole idea of a hackathon is, you know, to try new things. Um, if it doesn't work, you know, that's fine. You know, you're just kind of throwing things against the wall. Um, it's kind of a space where you can, you can experiment, so. Yeah, and, and you know, we have internal, oh, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, and I would say learn new things. Like even for me, I'm not very ex experienced in like, you know, all the latest AI updates. I haven't, you know, downloaded, used Langchain or any of that. Um, so I, that's actually something I'm be doing myself. You know, it's nice to have a period of time that, you know, I can say I'm focusing on this thing and learning this. So um, try something new is, is my advice. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons I love, you know, Docker's got internal hackathons and once a quarter, um, you know, we, we host an internal hackathon and there's usually a theme that's going along with it of um, AI machine learning or community or, you know, whatever else. And uh, all the different ideas that come across from the, the, the company and um, some of which I've never thought about before. But um, just like you said, you know, I'm still kind of new to the AI machine learning space as well, too. And so, um, having a, an internal hackathon that focused on this and, you know, getting me thinking about different ways of uh, using this to help solve various needs that developers might have. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really cool to yeah, have that time set aside and, and work on these different things. So, um, all right. And with that, let's see, checking through chat one more time. Uh, we've gotten some thank yous as well. And, uh, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and close off. So AK, again, thank you for, for joining us today. Um, no worries about all the, the stream fun. You know, again, we're still figuring it all out too, but um, yeah, thanks for walking us through Hub and helping uh, the folks realize uh, how they can use Docker Hub to, to help support their hackathon project, but then also all their other projects as well too. Um, and, and we'll hopefully continue this, this series as well, uh, um, even beyond the hackathon and help help folks out as well too. Um, again, again, if you're if you're new and you're wanting to join the hackathon, we've got the link in chat. We'll put it down in the description as well too. Um, there on the the dev post site, you'll see additional resources and uh, assistance to help you out with that. Feel free to join the the community Slack as well. There is a a channel there. It's Docker AI ML Hackathon, um, and so feel free to join that and ask questions or get help or look for a partner in crime to to work with here as well too. And uh, and we'll go from there. So. AK, any final parting words here? No, I think you kind of covered it. Excellent. All right. Thanks for joining everyone. Thanks all, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining us.